Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam ala mabad ayya lahabati fillah Continue on in our study of Imam Muqbil bin Hadi al-Wadi'i Allah yarhamuhu His treaties have he da'watana wa aqidatana And perhaps inshallah ta'ala we'll try to make this the last lesson and finish the book bi'idnillah uh, ta'ala or perhaps in one more sitting after this, we'll, we'll see. And the Imam, Rahmatullahi, he said, La naqbul fatwa illa bi dalil min kitabi la wa sunnati rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam athabata. Wa nankir ala mas'uleen wa ghayrihim ziyarat al qabr linen. وَغَيْرِهِ مِنْ زُعْمَاءَ الْإِلْحَادِ لِتَعْظِيمِ So the Shaykh said, Rahmatullahi he said that we do not accept any fatawa, any religious verdicts, except with delil, except with evidence from the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, athabita, meaning those authentic hadith that are proved to be authentic uh, by the ulama of Islam, ahla hadith, uh, regarding their authenticity and he said and we also negate or we also reject uh, those people who are responsible for visiting the graves of people like Lenin and other than him from the leaders of Ilhad of heresy or uh, uh, of disbelief for ta'zim, for uh, exalting these figures. So here the Imam is saying regarding uh, visiting the graves of uh, those who, dis who, are, who have died from the disbelievers uh, as far as to make ta'zim. That you should not go to any graves, of course, to make ta'zim and to exalt people. Even if it were the saints of Islam, we don't go to their graves and exalt them, or worship them, or venerate them. But rather, we hold them in respect and we have love for them, the awliya of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. <coughs> However, the, uh, especially so regarding the disbelievers, that we should not go, we should not exalt anyone of disbelief. Whether they're living or dead. And the Prophet ﷺ said, Whoever resembles the people, then he is from them. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Fi kitab al kareem Ulaika ladina kafaru bi ayati rabbihim wa liqa'ihi fahabatat a'malahum fala nuqeemu lahum yawm al qiyama wazna. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Fi kitab al kareem and those those disbelievers in uh, the signs of their Lord and in meeting him, meaning that they reject Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's verses, the Quran and his ayat koniya perhaps, and they reject the bath, meaning to uh, Yom al -Qiyama, and that one day they'll be resurrected to meet their Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala. Those disbelievers who reject these things, their deeds will be uh, diminished or uh, destroyed. Their deeds will have no weight. They will have no worth. Even if they were very uh, good people in this life and did righteous deeds of charity, helping people, sheltering people, providing for people, that it will not benefit them on the day of judgment. That all of their deeds will be like dust in the wind. And they have no uh, substance or no uh, status on the day of judgment. On the day of judgment they will have no status, no substance. And so this type of uh, so we don't venerate those who disbelieve in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the living or the dead and especially we do not go <clears throat> and venerate the graves of anyone and especially we do not make ta'zim so, for example, the Sheikh gave the example of Lenin, for example, amongst the uh, communists, that 
and, and, and socialist and so forth, that those people who uh, exalt those personalities who began these ideologies, that this is uh, a major sin. It is a major sin. And depending on the level of their exalting, of course, they could go into kufr and shirk. So we do not say and go to the graves of Lenin and Marx and, and whoever from the disbelievers and, you know, hold them in high esteem and high respect. However, it is permissible to go to the graves and as a sign uh, to remember death and to remember lessons in life. It is permissible if it is going to uh, have these positive effects of having you come closer to your Lord to remember death and so forth. So, but going to the graves and celebrating their festivals like Christmas and New Year's and uh, Valentine's Day and Halloween and all these things are impermissible. And then the Sheikh said, Rahmatullah Nunkir al al hukam al muslimin al al ittihad ma al ada al islam so wa kanu amrikiin o shu'iin. And we also uh, reject those Muslim governments that seek to unify and make a union and become one with those people who are enemies to Islam, regardless of whether they're communists or whether they were the uh, American government or what have you. And then the Imam said, likewise, and that, that right there, there's uh, immense uh, things, immense tafsil that we could go into, but I think it's sufficient what the Imam said, and if you want further explanation about those issues of al-wala, al-bara, and so forth, you can go back to Nawaqid al-Islam and some of those other books, and with the explanation of the ulama, that will give you some of the details uh, pertinent to that. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فِي كِتَابِ الْكَرِيمِ لَا تَجِدُ قَوْمٍ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِاللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمَ الْآخِرُ يُوَادُونَ مَنْ هَذَ اللَّهُ وَرَسُولُهُ that you won't find a people who believe in Allah and the Day of Judgment who love those people who have enmity towards Allah and His Messenger And then the Imam said, he said, أَدْعَوَةَ جَاهِلِيَةَ كَالْقَوْمِيَةَ وَعُرُوبَةَ نَنْكِرَهَا so the Shaykh also said that the da'wat, the various types of calls of jahiliya, of the days of ignorance, such as nationalism and, and so forth, that these are rejected, that we reject these calls and we consider them to be of the types of calls and propagation of the days of ignorance and jahiliya. And that they are some of the main reasons why the Muslims are in a weak state, are in, you know, and are behind. So this nationalism, this cause, call to nationalism, and uh, and this uh, this call to Arabism, and so forth, regardless of whether they're Muslim or disbelievers. That these kind of calls unite people and form a new type of wala wal bara that people love and hate for the sake of their national identity, identity for the sake of their color, for the sake of their uh, people. But this is not the Sharia uh, measurement. And al wala wal bara is to Allah Azza wa Jalla and His Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and it is to what Allah and it is to the uh, to the love of the Muslim community and Islam. This is the highest level of unity for mankind. That regardless of whether one's white, black, blue, green, whatever their color, whatever their national background, to unify strictly for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, unify on Iman and faith. That this is what Islam calls us to the Muslim Brotherhood and the Prophet Sallallahu said, وَكُنُّوا عِبَادَ اللَّهِ إِخْوَانًا And be brothers, uh, you know, commanding the Muslims to be brothers. And Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says, إِنَمَ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ 
Echwa. That verily the believers are brothers. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says fi kitab al kareem in the akrabukum in the lahi atqakum that the most beloved or respected or uh, to Allah is those people of taqwa. Those, the people who have the most taqwa from amongst you. So those are the, the, the Islamic, uh, that's the Islamic scale. And then the Imam said, Rahmatullah he said, وَنَنْتَذَرْ مُجَدِّدٍ يُجَدِّدْ اللَّهُ بِهِ هَذَا الدِّينِ لَمَا رُوَاهُ أَبُوْ دَعُودُ فِي سُنَنِهِ عَنَا بِهُ رَيْرَةَ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ تَنْعَنُهُ عَنَا النَّبِيِّ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَمْ إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَبْعَثُ لِهَذِهِ الْأُمَّةِ عَلَى الرَّاسِ كُلُّ مِيَا سِلَمْ مَنْ يُجَدِّدْ مَنْ يُجَدِّدُ لَهَا دِينَهَا وَنَرْجُوا أَنْ تَكُونَ الْيَقْضَى الْإِسْلَامِيَّ Mumahada lahu. The Sheikh said that, and we also are waiting for the Mujaddid, the Mujaddid or the, the reviver, uh, that Allah will revive his deen as it was narrated in uh, Abu Dawood in his, his uh, Sunan on, the, the, on Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam who said that Allah uh, raises every, from this nation, every, uh, at the head of every century, every hundred years, uh, someone who will revive his religion. And then the Shaykh said, and we hope that this individual will awaken, uh, cause an Islamic awakening, uh, you know, and lead, lead the way in this. And the Sheikh meant by Mujaddid a person who's an alim, who adheres to the Quran and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the understanding of the Salaf of this Ummah. And that, so this is a person from Ahlul Sunnati Wal Jama'ah. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, La tazal min al-haq. That there won't seem to be a group from my nation or a party from my nation that uh, continues to be on the truth. And <clears throat> the Shaykh also referred, and we've had great Imams uh, probably in this time, some of the Imams, the Shaykh himself, especially reviving those, the Dao of Ahl Sunnah in Yemen, was a Mujaddid in, in that respect. And Imam al Albani, La Shak, also was a, a great Mujaddid in the sciences of hadith in this time and of the sunnah, the messenger of Allah and the salafi da'wah, the call the call to ahl sunnati the call to Allah wa Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam based on the understanding of the salaf Imam al-Albani was uh, of that uh, caliber as well as Imam Abdulaziz bin Baz rahimullah ta'ala and bin Uthimeen and others and Then the Sheikh said, Rahmatul Aidei, Na'taqid dalal men yankir ahadith al Mahdi with the Jal, Wunazul Isa ibn Maryam, alayhi salatu wa salam, Walasna na'ni Mahdi a Rafida bel, Imam min ahl al Bayt. And the Mu'a, women Ahl Sunnati, Yamla al Art, Adalin, Wapistin, Kama Muliat, Vulman, Wujurin, Wakunda Indahu, Min Ahl Sunnati, Leenda Sub, or Sub, a father of Sahaba, Laysa bin al Adal. So the Sheikh then said, and we believe that uh, misguidance and we believe uh, we, we, we believe that it is misguidance and from the 
uh, weak a hadith, or we, we believe that those people are misguided who deny the a hadith regarding the Mahdi and the Dajjal and the descending of Isa bin Maryam alayhi salatu wasalam and we do not believe that this person is the person that the Rafida or from the Rafida uh, but rather that they are this person will be an Imam from the family of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam from Ahlul Sunnah and this person will bring justice throughout the earth as there as the earth is filled with so much oppression and wickedness and we say that this person is from Ahlul Sunnah so the Shaykh then gives it Muqayyid makes it Muqayyid he restricts it by saying we say that this person is from Ahlul Sunnah they're not Shi'i they're not uh, Rafidi they're not anything else they're not Khariji like the people believe that uh, the commander of ISIS Abu Bakr Baghdadi that this person is a reviver of the deen or he's a Khalifa no this person is not spreading justice in the earth that little swath of territory that they're expanding is not a place of justice it's a place of a slaughter and a place of crucifixion so the Shaykh said, وَكُنَّا إِنَّهُ مِنْ أَهْلُ Sunnah." That this person is from Ahlul Sunnah. They're not from the Takfidin or the Khawarij or the, the, the uh, Rafa, the Shia. And then he says, لِأَنَّ سُبَّ أَفَاضِ الْسَحَابَ لَيْسَ مِنَ الْعَدْلِ That cursing the greatest of the Sahaba is not from justice. So that negates automatically that their Mahdi is the Mahdi Mu'tabr that we're waiting for. But rather, this person will be, the Mahdi will be a person of the Sunnah. And then the Shaykh said, وَأَحَدِيثَ مَهْدِي صَحِيحَ مِنْهَا حَدِيثَ أَبِي سَعِيدٍ رضي الله تعالى عنه عن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم Actually, this is a, a hadith which is verifying that the Mahdi would descend. Uh, the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said, لَا تُقُمْ السَّعَى حَتَّى تَمْتَلِي الْعَرْضِ ظُلْمٍ وَعُدْوَانٍ ثم يخرج الرجل من أطر أطرتي أو من أهل بيتي يملأها قسطا وعدلا كما مليت ظلما وعدوانا. so it came from a hadith رواه أحمد وغيره وهو في صحيحة وهو هو صحيح. this hadith which is one of the hadith about the Mahdi and it says that the the hour will not be established until uh, the earth is, uh, is full of, of oppression and wickedness and, and enmity. And then a man will come from my family and he will spread uh, righteousness and justice throughout the earth uh, in, in the same way that oppression and enmity was spread. So the Mahdi will come with righteousness. And then the Shaykh so will end his treaties, will finish the treaties, be in the law. He said, Dawatana wa akidatana ahabba ilayna min anfusina wa amwalina wa abnaina falasna musta'ideen in nubay'aha bil dhahab wa waraq nukul hadha hatta la yatma' في دعوة تامع ويظن أنه يستطيع أن يستميلنا بدرهم ودينار على أن ضوء السياسة يعلمون عنها عنا هذا من أجل هذا فهم عيسون من أن يتمعون بمناسب أو بما so the Sheikh said, this is our, our call and our creed, and it is more beloved to us than ourselves, our wealth, our children, and we are not ready to sell, uh, to sell it, meaning sell our da'wah or our, 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 our creed, our aqidah, for gold or, or wealth 
and we say that uh, the one who uh, is needy and uh, who the one who is needy and that we are not in need and that the one who's needy thinks that he is able to uh, to uh, turn us away with basically buy us off with uh, uh, with with uh, dirhams and dinar with wealth uh, and and po and and politics. However, uh, this this is uh, basically impossible, and we will not sell our religion for wealth or for status. And then the Imam said, "Hadhi nafathat an aqidatana wa da'atana wa dhakra adilataha yatul al kitab." وَقَدْ ذَكَرْتُ جَلَّ أَدِلَّتَهَا فِي الْمَخْرَجِ مِنَ الْفِتْنَةِ مِنَ الْفِتْنَةِ وَمِنْ وَمِنْ لَدَيْهِ أَيْ اعْتِرَادٍ عَلَى هَذَا فَنَحْنُ مُسْتَعِدُونَ لِكَبُولِ النَّصْحِ نُصْحِ إِنْ كَانَ مُحَقٍّ وَلِمُنَاظَرَتِهِ إِنْ كَانَ مُخْتِئٍ وَلِلْعَرَادِ عَنْهُ إِنْ كَانَ مُعَانِدٍ وَاللَّهُ عَلَمْ وَاللَّهُ عَلَمْ هذا ومما ينبغي أن يعلم أن هذا ليس شاملا لدعوتنا ولعقيدتنا فإن دعو فإن دعوتنا من الكتاب وسنة إلى كتاب وسنة وهكذا العقيدة وحسب الله ونعم وقيل. The Sheikh ended his treatise by saying this is just a, a summary or something brief. From our our akida, our creed, and our dawah, our minhaj, or our, our call, and I mentioned in it uh, some of the evidences, but to to mention a lot of the evidences, it would make the kitab very big. And he said, and I've already mentioned a lot of the evidence in my book, Makhraj Middle Fitna, uh, um, uh, the way out from from fitna from trials. Uh, the, uh, and so whoever possesses it or who, whoever finds any contradictions then we are re ready to accept it and we're ready to accept advice and if this person is truthful if they're truthful and they find any mistakes or any contradictions then we accept it we we're, we're open to advice and we are also open to Debate uh, if there is uh, if there is any mistakes or any issues that you have with uh, this treaties, and uh, basically we are not. And and if the person is is arrogant or stubborn, then we are willing to debate with them about it. And he said, and Allah knows best. And he says this is what is uh, nece uh, necessary or it is necessary to to understand that this book is not uh, containing and complete with all the aspects of our dawah and our creed and he said and verily our dawah is from the book and the sunnah to the book and the sunnah and likewise our our aqidah and then he said and so thus ends the treaties and two points can be observed from this last a statement from the sheikh amongst many other benefits but two points I want to mention and one is it shows us the tawad that this imam had and may Allah bless him and forgive him of any mistakes he made and bless him with genital for those amin and it shows his his humbleness that he was willing. He didn't make any any big claims, but instead he said, "We are we are ready to accept any advice if the person is coming with the truth, and we're willing to debate if this person was mistaken or that they had any 
uh, they had some arrogance or what have you with regards to what was in here, then we are ready to debate and discuss with them. And so the Sheikh was open if there was any mistakes or anything. And the other point I wanted to mention is that uh, the Sheikh was also illustrating his dawah and in the last statement he said for in the dawatana min al kitabi wa sunnati illa kitabi wa sunnah he said verily our dawa our call is from the book of allah and the sunnah to the book and the sunnah so the shaykh was not about his bia the shaykh until his dying days may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy upon him refused and negated and rejected and uh, uh, hisbia, and hisbia meaning partisanship, calling to a group, calling to a sect, believing that you're the only group of saved people, you're the only five Salafis in your community, or you and your four sheikhs that you exalt, or whatever the case may be. Sheikh Mukbil, Imam Mukbil bin Hadi al Wadi'i, Allah Yarhamu, was not about that. And those people who listen to his tapes and who read his books, and as we studied his treaties, if you want to go to his words, and you want to study his life. And for those people who met this imam will know and can tell you that he was the farthest from those things. He didn't call to Damaj. He didn't call to him. He invited. His doors were open. Come, come whoever wants to seek knowledge. If you're coming from China, if you're coming from Nigeria, if you're coming from Spain, it doesn't matter. Marhaban Bikum. Imam Mukbil was has doors was open to those people who wanted to come, not cause fitna. Call to the Book of Allah. Come to learn the Book of Allah and the Sunnah, the Message of Allah, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, on a midhaj, a salaf asali. This is what Imam Mukbil bin Hadi al Wadi'i, Allah yarhamahu. This is what his dawa was about, and his dawa was about calling from the Quran and the Sunnah to the Quran and the Sunnah, not calling to himself, not calling to his group, not calling to a sect, not calling to a party. Uh, or anything like this, and this is from the mercy of Allah, and there are so many lessons we can take if we go back and study this Imam's life, and study his books, to learn, to really appreciate Kitab al-Sunnah, and to exalt Kitab al-Sunnah. If you listen to his tapes, you will gain that from that great Imam, because the Imam was always about calling. If You, you will not find a tape where he's not exalting the book of Allah and, and, and coming with ayat and coming from the sunnah of the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and me personally that's where I learned and, 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 and saw an exalting of the sunnah of the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam and that imam was a great lesson and an ibrah for us and may Allah bless him with genital for dosa and forgive him of his sins and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us of our many sins Thus we've completed the treaties and may Allah put barakah in it and may Allah forgive us of our many sins. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.